Welcome back to my computer screen. I'm still going to be stuck here for a while and I actually don't mind doing this although I'd rather be out in the shop turning. But last week I did a video showing a program called 3D Design Pro and I used that to generate a shape. If I had a very expensive bowl blank, not segments, but a solid piece of kind of expensive wood or just a piece of wood you just were worried about ruining. You're not sure what it's going to look like. I showed how you can take a sketch, you can take a, make a pencil sketch, you can scan it, you can import it into 3D Design Pro, then you just draw dots around it and on the right hand side of the screen it actually shows the bowl. You can actually grab it and rotate it and get a good idea what it looks like and maybe give yourself a little bit more confidence to go ahead and take the gouge and start cutting it. So. We're going to take that same design because uh, there was some requests that I turn that into segments. So we'll do that. Let me open up that file. And that's right there. This is what I ended up with. This was showing what that blank would look like. Kind of like this. Now it, it wouldn't have segments on it when you're turning it of course. It'll be a solid piece of wood. But this was a way to get a good look at it. And if we want to turn this into segments, I actually have to remove what I have because these are not really representing segments. So I'll delete all of these. And this should be in there as a flat. I need it to be a disc, so it's a solid disc. And I will change that to 0.5 which is a half inch. Now to keep this somewhat simple I'll go with half inch segments so you don't have a whole lot of them to do. So we're going to start adding and it is set up on 12. It's three quarters though. I don't want three quarters. We're going to do a half inch and I'll just add the rest of them. So there's uh, 12 segments a row, uh, per row, and there's one, two, three, four, five of those, and then one solid piece. And if I snap that over there, that's what that looks like, and that's not going to really look any different, but it has snapped all of these segments to show you you have enough stock. You can now do a little fine tuning with it by taking this little cross arrowed tool up here and you can just start pulling this a little bit if you think it needs it and maybe right there and tweak the shape. I do this on all of my segmented turnings but my final shape is created with a bowl gouge. So this to me this is still sort of like well I wanted something like that and generally when you glue the segments up and you cut everything away down to the corner that's what you get. So you spend a little time doing this and when you're kind of happy with it then you're done. And we want to snap it again. So we just made some adjustments. What happened there is it tells you the size of each one of these segments. And that can be seen in these windows here. We know they're a half inch thick. I know that the edge length on this one here which is row 6 is 2.13 and it'll just show you each one. You can see them there. You can also see them in the the cutting list. So here is the information. Here's 12 segments. The board thicknesses are all half inch. Here's the diameters on the outside, the inside. This is the length of each segment. And this is how wide the strips are on each row. See so a cut enough to get that width and so on down the line. This is called the economy board length. That means you take that board you put it against your fence and hopefully it's a wedgie sled. I think that's the absolute best tool for segment work. Uh, and you always use the same side and you'll use less wood. If you do the grain match, and let me go in here and show you what that's all about. Here's one of the segments. So if I had this side marked, every time I put it against a fence it would always be there. 
but the angles will flip-flop on them as you do them. So one time you'll see the grain on this side, the next one will be on that side. It really doesn't affect the look as far as I'm concerned because sometimes I think it looks even better. But what happens why it takes more is if you made your first cut, then you cut the scrap away and cut the angle again, and then you always maintain this side. That's grain match. You'll always have that side facing. So I, I don't think I've ever done a grain match because I'm satisfied with how beautiful the wood is and the grain and how it plays with each other. And I think it looks good that way. Now here you're seeing your angle of your cut right there. That's 15 degrees. Now that brings me back to, there's 12 segments here. My preference, and you can get some very interesting looks, is have 18 segments per row. I'm going to change that to 18, and there's a reason that we're doing that. So you now have everything you need for information for making this turning. And it's all in this right there. And while you're cutting, you can see it here as well. Each row will have the information right there. So you can do it that way, but it's probably better to print that sheet out. So why did I do 18? Because you don't have to use all the same type of wood here. And let me show you how cool this is. Now I don't know if you've ever heard of a tornado bowl, but it's commonly called a tornado. You notice I just held the control key down and then I clicked each one of these. If I right click one of them, and I decide which type of wood I want it to be. Okay, I'll tell you why that happened. <laughs> this is a good time to do that. I have 18, and over here on the right-hand side, I want to repeat it every six times. You can't repeat. Uh, I was going to do three rows. You can't do that with this number of segments. It won't repeat evenly if I did it four times. So that is something I should have paid attention to. All right, now when I click it and I pick Paduk, I have Paduk there on all of them. And let me show you what one of these rows look like when we go to there. See, I have, I have the Paduk right there. And then it repeats itself again. So we got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, like that. So it repeats six times. Let's go back here and we will now change this to another type of wood. And I think walnut always goes good. So there, we now have a tornado bowl. A very simple one. If I was doing it, I, I would cut these down to a quarter inch or I'd make this a lot taller. But if this is your first segment of turning, this will look beautiful. And you've got all the information you need to do that. It's right there. Pretty easy. This is not going to look any different. These will now look different. Let me scale this down a little bit. So you can see how they stagger. And I can also go down each row. It'll show you all that. And there's the bottom. So that's pretty simple. Oh, and the other thing is, you know what I would do? I would probably change the type of wood on here. And you could go with a dark wood if you wanted. Um, let's see. I guess we could just show you what it looks like with Wenge. So you could put that on there. All right. That's, that's about it. And next week I have a lot of requests for using uh, designing something in Tinkercad and I have a couple things that are going to be very useful for the lathe and I'll show you how easy it is to generate those shapes using a free program and of course if you have a 3D printer that helps but if you don't have a 3D printer I like sitting around just doing that whether I'm going to print it or not so I think that kind of wraps it up and uh, after this, uh, maybe we'll go with um, a Lamination Pro and show you how that works. Because I can put a feature ring right here. 
but we'll probably do a different shape for that. And then also I should show you Segment Pro, which is extremely easy to use. I like this one better because I can do more things with it. So that kind of ends this for the week, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I sure appreciate you watching. And until the next time, I'll see you later.